Hey, my name's Finn. I'm a web designer and web flow developer at antler.co. And for the past four years, I've been freelancing as a web designer and web flow developer traveling around the world. This video is all about how I would go about learning web design again from scratch in 2025. I'm gonna share exactly what you should be focusing on at every step of the process. I'm gonna tell a few stories so you can learn from my mistakes. And by the end of this video, you will know the exact process that you need to take to become a professional web designer. Please leave a like on the video just to help me out and make this reach more people. Okay, let's get started. There are four phases to becoming a web designer and let's take a look at them. The first phase is getting started and this takes about four months. After that, you progress to getting your first clients and this process will last around six months. After your first few clients, you're ready to go full freelance. And after you've been full time for a while, you can progress to the final stage, building a personal brand. This is the exact process that I use to quit my job and move to Portugal and Spain and to fulfill my dream. So I'm gonna share it with you today. It all starts with getting started. And this process is all about getting the fundamental skills of web design and development under your belt. But be careful because this is the part of the process where you will waste the most time. The problem is you don't know what to learn and where to learn it from. But don't worry, I've got you covered in this video. The way that I got started, my personal story, is I came across Flux Academy's content on YouTube and I really loved Ron Segal's way of teaching. So I became very excited, wanting to learn web design and web flow. And because I was so excited, I went out and bought like six courses on Udemy, and I also bought one of Ron's courses. And I actually wasted lots of time trying to learn every single course at the same time. So my advice to you in these very early phases is don't get too overwhelmed. Focus on learning just two skills, Figma, so you can design, and Framer, so you can develop websites. These are the two fundamental skills that you will need to have a career in web design and development. A quick note on web development, it's really important that you learn to build websites as well as design them. That's because most clients are actually looking for web developers. So you actually get a lot more clients if you learn development as well. So I recommend Framer or Webflow if you are a bit more advanced. And all you need to get started is one high quality course for each of these skills. For Figma, I recommend Figma for Web Designers, which is a Flux Academy course, or something that's a bit cheaper, Complete Web Design from Figma to Webflow. These two courses should get you up to speed with the basics of Figma. Next, to learn Framer, I recommend the Framer Masterclass, which is a Flux Academy course, or you can go to Udemy for a cheaper course, create your dream website with Framer from A to Z. Go deep on these courses, don't worry about getting six of them, get one for each and then just complete the course. There are two more resources I recommend for getting started. Use Reloom to build some sitemaps. This is a great AI tool that builds sitemaps and wireframes for you. And it's gonna give you a great idea of how websites are structured. Next, you probably wanna get a UI kit, which will show you all the common layouts for websites and UIs. I recommend Untitled UI as your first UI kit. And so after about four months of doing these courses and playing around with these tools, you're gonna to have a really solid base of knowing design and also learning how to do some development. Congratulations, you are ready to progress to the next stage, getting your first clients. Getting your first clients is one of the most exciting parts of your web design career, but it can also be one of the most stressful. But don't worry, I'm gonna show you how to manage this in the best way. You get started by getting a portfolio website template and customizing it so you have your own website. Then you start telling family and friends that you're a web designer and you're looking to work with your first clients for a really good discount. Right now, money isn't important, okay? So if you're gonna get a client that's gonna pay you a couple of hundred bucks or even for free, it's actually quite a good idea to still take that project. Building your portfolio, getting experience handling clients, the chance to apply your skills you're learning in your courses and growing your network. By focusing on these things, you will actually get more clients in the long run. The way this worked out for me is I was telling my friends and family that I was now a web designer and my dad was volunteering at a garden center locally and they actually wanted to have a new website. So I charged them $300 and I got my first client designing a website for a garden center. Now here's how I did that. I designed the website from scratch in Figma, then I built it in Webflow. It's not the best website, but 
you know, first try, not too bad. Here's what I would have done differently and what I recommend you doing instead. Instead of designing a website from scratch like I did, what you wanna do is find the client's industry and find a website template. Then all you do is copy that template in Figma using you know, their colors and their fonts and their content. Once the client approves that design in Figma, then you buy the website template that you found and use that as your base and framework to build the website. 80% of it's already gonna be done for you and it's gonna make the process a lot quicker to design, but also much easier to develop. Long-term, you won't be doing this, but for your first few clients, this is what I recommend doing to get you started. Another tip I have for you is don't just rely on word of mouth from friends and family. What you can actually do is use this very interesting lead generation strategy. This is the best outreach strategy that I've found for web design. I'm gonna share it with you right now. Pick a niche in your local area, let's just say law websites, for example. You might have 30 law firms in your city that have crappy websites that you wanna redesign. Find a website template for a law firm, then go to each law firm's website and copy their content onto the homepage of the template. Now you can send a Loom video to that potential client saying, hey, I've redesigned your website. Here's what the homepage looks like. Would you be interested in collaborating on a project? And you can repeat that for every single law firm in your entire city using the same template. If you follow this advice and send all 30 emails, you might get one or two clients from that. So this process, you've found your first few clients and you're starting to get your first few projects. Once you've been doing this for about six months, you'll be ready to progress to the next stage, becoming a full-time freelancer. In this stage, you finally have enough clients to become a full-time web design freelancer. You can quit that job that you hate and you can start living your dream. But you also have new challenges. If you've quit that main job, you no longer have regular income coming in. So it's important you work hard to maintain your current clients and also keep getting new ones. Remember that if you learn web development, one of the other benefits of that is clients will come back to you for their website development maintenance. This means that you get some recurring income from past clients coming back to you. This is really helpful. But now that you've quit your job and you're a full-time freelancer, you can work remotely now. So if you live in a country that's quite expensive, like Australia, UK, Canada, you really wanna consider moving overseas, you can move to a country where your living expenses are much lower. And this is gonna take the pressure off you when you've just left your job and you don't have so much income coming in. I did this and this is when I moved to Portugal and that was a really great way for me to travel, see my friends, but also live in a place that's a little bit cheaper to make this less pressure on me. So what advice do I have for you if you're in this stage? What you wanna focus on is, first of all, perfecting your skill. You see, now you've quit your job and you're full time, you have a lot of time to actually work on your skills. You wanna be making cleaner designs, making less mistakes in the development process. And it was really when I became a full-time freelancer that I was able to fully dedicate myself to this craft and become an expert. You also wanna start doing really awesome projects that are gonna be part of your portfolio. Because as you build up your portfolio, that's gonna become a sales tool for you. And other clients who might wanna work with you will see your portfolio and then reach out to you. So one of your other focuses needs to be putting these projects into your portfolio and showcasing them on your website. You also wanna be trying to get bigger and bigger website projects with more advanced functionality, and you also wanna be charging more money for them. Again, this feeds back into the portfolio thing where if clients have seen you've delivered a really advanced project, it makes them feel like you can deliver them an advanced project too, and they can trust you more. And thirdly, you wanna start sharing this portfolio on social media. Until now, you've probably just been posting it on your website, which is fine, but now that you're actually getting pretty good at what you do, you wanna start sharing your projects on social media. You can post case studies as part of your portfolio, post content on LinkedIn, social media. I got hired for multiple freelance projects from LinkedIn, and I even got my current job, my full-time position from LinkedIn as well. So if you haven't already, make sure you check out my video on how to use LinkedIn as a designer. When it comes to what you should focus on as a full-time web design freelancer, there's really no secret. Just keep getting more projects under your belt, keep charging higher prices, and keep building your network. Once you've been freelancing full-time for around a year or even two years, you're ready to start moving into the final phase of becoming a web designer, and that's building your brand. This phase is all about setting up your career as a designer 
for the rest of your life. You finally have the option to turn down clients you don't really want to work with. And you can specifically choose projects that you want to work on because they interest you. You can start moving into a niche if that's what you're interested in. But to be honest, during this phase, you can focus on whatever you want to. Let me share with you what I'm focusing on right now that I'm in this phase. I work full time for one client and very rarely I'll accept a side project with a very, very good client. But 90% of people that reach out for projects, I can't take those on. I spend most of my time now not learning how to design, but learning how to market myself as a designer. This is increasing my visibility so that I can build my network and actually create a community around myself. I'm doing this YouTube channel, trying to help other designers and increase my visibility that way. I'm experimenting with new ways to share my work, like using Adobe After Effects to create motion design mockups. And I'm even connecting with other designers and other content creators to expand my network with key people. And of course, I'm trying to get bigger projects and showcase them on my portfolio. My quick advice is if you're in this phase or you just wanna know what I would recommend for you in this phase is start a YouTube channel because it really is one of the best ways to get clients as a web designer. Start by posting some video case studies of your work and start blogging about what you're working on and what you're interested in. The whole point of this phase of building your personal brand is all about constructing the career that you wanna build and becoming the designer that you really wanna be. Probably at this point, you don't even need to be watching my videos anymore because you have a really good idea of how you wanna grow your own career and you'll probably have a great idea of how this industry works. So I wanna thank you very much for watching to the end of this video. Leave a comment and let me know at what stage that you're in so that I can make more videos for you because I, I really wanna help out you guys, my audience as much as possible. And so if you ever leave a comment about an idea for a video, uh, it's really appreciated by me because then I, I know what videos to make basically. This is really my four step process and how I became a designer. And so if you follow the same process, then you can get to the same lifestyle that you want to build, the same career that you want for yourself, and you can ultimately become happier and have better well-being. So thanks for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one.